Hi, I'm Greg Naver, Neighbors Produce Farm. And here on our farm, we grow tomatoes, cucumbers, zucchini, broccoli, melons, sweet corn, and a few strawberries, I guess. And indoors, we produce our tomatoes, our cucumbers, and our zucchini. Inside the tunnels, our primary pest concerns are spider mites. Uh, the indoor tunnel uh, environment is dry and it's just a perfect host place for, for spider mites. And we do also have to deal with cucumber beetles on cucumbers and zucchini. I don't think the problem is severe inside as it is outside, but we do have to deal with those. The pesticides that we use indoors, um, first of all, we have to look at the label and see what's not prohibited for the greenhouse. Uh, if it's not prohibited on the label, we can use it indoors. Um, so um, some of the synthetic pyrethroids can be used indoors. They're restricted use. Um, and those are the primary ones we use. Um, we also use indoors on the tomatoes, we'll do a fungicide treatment for leaf mold. And some of the products that can be used even in the home garden, like uh, commonly called daconil or funganil, cannot be used indoors. So instead we have to use a product um, that contains copper or some other copper formulations commonly called uh, mancozeb or coside. And uh, again, we have to look at the label see if it's prohibited. If it's not prohibited, we can use it. And then, um, and then of course, we're, we constantly have to watch the uh, re-entry period, especially on, on the crops that we produce. Our harvest day is pretty much seven days a week. Um, you know, tomatoes we might harvest once every three days, and then again, if it's hot, we might harvest every day. And so the restricted entry and the harvest interval are big issues, and sometimes we just can't do anything otherwise it will interfere with our harvest. And harvest is, is the name of the game. In regards to uh, signage and, and warnings as far as uh, greenhouse treatments and stuff like that, um, we just use standard off-the-shelf warning signs that, we can, that you can buy from any supply house. And, uh, and a lot of our, our warnings are verbal. Um, we're a small operation, so we only have just a couple of employees that are actually working in the tunnels at any time and uh, I generally try to um, do all the applications over the weekend when nobody's here. I do all the applications myself. I don't, I don't let anyone do that except myself. And then for pesticide storage, all the pesticides are stored in a separate building. Um, and uh, everything is out of, away from any food storage areas or anything like that. Okay, in regards to personal protective gear and equipment, um, again, the label is, is usually what I go by. Um, sometimes I go over, over and beyond. Um, most of the products that I do use are relatively tame as pesticides go. Um, in a lot of cases, long sleeve shirts and gloves, hat, and sometimes goggles are required, and occasionally respirators. Um, and, but that's what I use. I just go by the label. Some special precautions in regards to pesticide use inside the greenhouse or tunnel because of the restricted area. Um, one has to consider the, the height of the canopy. Are you going to be brushing against the crop while you're, while you're working through it? And one of the techniques that I use for myself, especially with tomatoes when they start getting taller, is um, basically walk backwards. Start at the end of the row and work, progress backwards out the row so you're not walking through treated product. And again, protective gear, and sometimes uh, going beyond what the label says because you know you're going to be have opportunity to brush up against something. And uh, and in the case of a greenhouse that has ventilation fans and or circulation fans in it, we shut everything down during treatment. And in those cases, we usually try to do it in the evening when we don't need to have the fans running. Um, that way, product that's atomized during the process of applying isn't being blown around until we're done, then we can start everything back up. In terms of environmental issues with pesticide use in, inside the greenhouse, the issues that we have to be most concerned with that are not ordinary would be our pollinators. Um, we do use bees, um, primarily bumblebees is what we use as a pollinator around here. And uh, so we're trying to use products that have a short residual and we have to target our applications when the bees are not foraging and we've 
been v fairly successful in that, um, just with the timing of our sprays. And um, as far as other environmental issues, there's really no difference between the, t the greenhouse and any, and any application outdoors. Um, you've got to consider, you know, the air, the air temperature, you know, wind, even in the tunnels, because these are ventilated by rolling up the sides. Um, and you don't want drift to non-target crops and, and the same issues. Okay. So in terms of the worker protection um, standards, since I am the sole applicator, the, the primary responsibility falls on me to protect myself. Um, obviously, you know, with people coming in and working in the greenhouses, you still have to do take care of notification of, of applications and those, those issues. Um, and that's really my only concern. Um, uh, otherwise, you know, follow the label. You know, it tells you what you need to do to protect yourself, what you need to do to protect your employees, and and actually, um, the pre-harvest interval is a big, as big or bigger than anything else because with these types of crops and harvest that that occurs almost on a daily basis. You know, those issues, that is a, just a huge issue. Um, you, your timing and, and management of applications is just critical. Here at our farm, um, we're basically a seed to, seed to sale operation. We buy all of our own seed. We produce all of our own transplants. We don't buy any transplants from outside sources, except in the event of a catastrophic failure. Uh, I guess I should put that qualifier in there. Otherwise, we grow our own transplants. We raise them up until they're large enough to transplant, as these tomatoes in here are. Um, and uh, then uh, production continues right on through the season. And as soon as harvest starts, then we do our harvesting upwards of every day of the week. Um, we have several farmers markets that we attend. Uh, obviously, the hay market in Lincoln is our big one. And we've got a couple smaller ones. And then when sweet corn season starts, then uh, we'll open up our roadside stands and last year we had two this year we intend to have three and those run six days a week and so we're harvesting every day for those and uh, and so it's we're seed to customer quite frankly you know we we sell it because we grew it <laughs>